My Lime. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who bring the best to you each morning. The widest choice of cereals in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Lime? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a visiting gentleman who is not only the chairman of What's My Line in London, but who is the chairman of the new Irish Television Authority. Welcome, Mr. Eamon Andrews. Arlene. Well, there are always many reasons why I love coming to What's My Line in New York. Two in particular. One is Arlene, and the other is the delightful lady I now introduce again, our friend Dorothy Kilgallen. And now, it's always delightful to introduce our chairman of this panel and chairman of Random House and president of Random House, Bennett Cerf. Here's our superb panel moderator and molder of heavyweight prize fighting champions, John <laughs> Charles Daly. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. I would pause for just a moment to say that um, we have prevailed upon Miss Arlene to be here with us tonight under very trying circumstances, and we're very proud of her that she does come to be with us on our usual Sunday night, because, as I think you all must realize, this is a very difficult and trying time for her, and we think it's wonderful that she came to join us. Thank, Thank you, Miss Harley. And it's nice to have Eamon Andrews here. I may be the molder of uh, champion fighters, but if you... Any of you saw the closed circuit of the fight on Monday night. After it was over, I was afraid Eamon was going to start the second one with his <laughs> microphone. He was covering for the British Broadcasting Corporation. He was all over that prize ring. And now we'll see if we can get him all over the panel. We'll also have a famous mystery guest a little bit later in the show. And we'll meet our first challenger after this one. And now let's meet our first challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Arthur Mercante, is that right, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mercante, I want you to know that it took us years, nearly 10 years, to find a chalk that would break immediately upon contact with the board. <laughs> we used to have one that wouldn't, but that was silly. You know, that's ordinary chalk. Where are you from, sir? I'm from Queens, New York. Mr. Queens, Jelly. New York. Well, yes, this sir. makes you a neighbor of our panel. May I present the panel, Mr. Mercante? Will you join me over here, please, yes, sir? sir? You know how we keep score? Yes, sir. You know how we keep score. Most everything is cleared up, except I want to ask if anybody on the panel recognizes Mr. Mercante. Eamon Andrews, do you recognize Mr. Mercante? I thought I recognized the name, but I don't recognize the face. Well, last Monday night, he refereed the Patterson-Johansson championship that, fight. <laughs> Actually, he's been a, a boxing coach and a referee for uh, Golden Gloves, and he was himself a Golden Gloves finalist back in, what, 1938. 1938. And they say he hasn't fought since. Well, I went to the fight, and I think one of the more remarkable things about the fight was that Mr. McCarty would get in the middle between Patterson and Johansson and say, get back, boy. <laughs> I don't know how you survived it all. Needless to say, that is more Mr. McCarty's avocation. We're here to determine what his vocation is. Now that uh, this much has been revealed, let us tell the audience in the theater and the folks at home exactly what your line is. All right, 
panel, we will tell you that Mr. McCante is salaried and that he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning because you were asking all the questions in the ring right after the fight with Eamon Andrews. Well, I certainly try. May I say what a great job you did, almost as good as Patterson. It was a pleasure to watch you. I, does, I take it from the way the audience reacted that your vocation, um, as John puts it, has nothing at all to do with sport. No, sir. Uh-huh. Now, this product that you deal with, I gather the thing to do is try and find out what sort of product it is. Is it a small product? Sometimes. It's a... <laughs> I see. That means there are many different kinds of products. That's correct. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, wait a minute. There uh, are many different kinds, kinds of, of products. That's a nice yes. big fat no. Do you want to say it or do you want me to say it? Sizes, I I perhaps no. I should have said. You said no. That's right. That's, uh, that's too late, even. That's one dollar uh, nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Bacardi, uh, I thought you did a wonderful job, too. I saw you on closed circuit, and it was just, I think I couldn't remember your name. We were so busy looking at the principles. There was so much action. Uh, about this product, uh, does it come in many sizes, but it still remains generically about the same? Yes. Um, are all these sizes something that I could carry about with me? Not always. Yeah. No. That's two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Moncardi, has this product of yours ever been, or is it now, alive? <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Mr. McCarty, is it a product that I might have, or use, or like to have? By all means. Is, uh, is it a product that one would have in one's home? Yes, ma'am. And if one had it, would it be out where somebody could see it? Yes, ma'am. Um, is it a product that is decorative? Let me say this, if I may, so that you're not misled. Uh, this is a product which, if it was your intention to make use of it, uh, might be out where it would be seen, but this does not uh -huh. necessarily say it would be out where it could be seen at all times. I see. It, it has nothing to do with a game of any sort, does it, Mr. McCarty? No. no. <clears throat> is it something that the family can enjoy, the entire family? Yes, ma'am. Some would have to take vicarious pleasure from it, but certainly... <laughs> is it something that is, uh, would be better for the children not to play with? I would say so. It is therefore more of an adult product? Yes. Is it a product that is consumed? Yes. Is it a product that is put in the mouth and consumed that way? Yes. Is it uh, potable rather than solid? Yes. You mean, can you carry it? Is that what you meant, Miss Arlene? <laughs> carry it inside of you. <laughs> uh, does it uh, have any alcoholic content of any kind? S slight. Slight? Sounds like near beer. <laughs> uh, is it, uh, did you give me a hint then? Is it in the beer family? I'd have to say yes to that. Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> uh, well, then, beer is the product? Yes, ma'am. And do you manufacture beer? No. no. Four Why down not? And six to go, Mr. Andrew. You make beer that people have vicarious pleasure from. Only one person can drink at a time. Well, and if it comes in various sizes, then presumably you have something to do with the packaging or presenting of the beer, either in crates or in cartons or some such thing. No, sir. Well, that's no. a very good presumption <laughs> to get you a fat no. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Gallon. Now, you did say that uh, people would have this thing in their homes. Well, I know they'd have beer in their homes, but obviously this is not the beer that we're talking about that comes in the various sizes, is it? Yes. yes. Uh, would it be anything we're, from which... We, we are talking about beer. That is the product, and it comes in various sizes because but... it is packaged in various sizes. Oh. But, but then you said, Mr. McCarty's job. Yes, but, but I'm, I'm still worried about what I can't carry. I want you to know I can carry a six-pack. Well, I'd love to see you going <laughs> up Fifth Avenue with a keg on your shoulders. <laughs> 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 Then uh, uh, getting it into our homes or anybody's homes has nothing to do with what Mr. Mercanti That's does. Right. All right. Uh, do you do something at the brewery? Yes. Uh, do you ever go out from the brewery? By the brewery. Uh, and do you ever leave the brewery and go from place to place? Yes. Are you a beer salesman? Yes. <laughs> yes. 
You know, and I must say that, that uh, if one does choose this career, which M Mr. McCunty has, has pursued with such success for about 10 years, he certainly picked the company because he's with the Rheingold Brewery, and they have all those pretty girls every year, remember? And I will say, after your performance of last Monday night, we hereby nominate you as Mr. Rheingold of 1960. Thank you. Very Thanks much. very much. Thank you. All right, panel, a very good beginning. Let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? O.T. Gillette. Right, sir? <laughs> Mr. Gillette, where are you from? I'm from Flagstaff, Arizona. Flagstaff, Arizona? Yes, I sir. say, it, it looks as though you've come from the big open country. That's a wonderful face. May I present our panel? Mr. Gillette, would you join me over here, please, sir? Now, tell me, do you know how we keep score, Mr. Gillette? Yes, sir. All right, then we'll let the studio audience and the people who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we will tell you that Mr. Gillette is salaried and he deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Gillette, may I hope that you didn't hurt your thumb while you were working on your job? I did hurt it while I was working on my job. <laughs> that, was, I, that was just a conciliatory remark, John. It really what uh, doesn't count in the question. I didn't even reach for no, the no, card, no. Miss All Arlene. Right. I'm not predatory tonight <laughs> yet. Do you work at hours other than the regular nine to five hours, Mr. Gillette? Well, we work around the clock if necessary. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, do you work for or in a large building? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Andrews. Well, you look so well, I'm sure you don't work in a large building. And you obviously use your hands in your job if you damage that thumb of yours. Yes. Uh-huh. Is your service anything to do with something that grows in the great outdoors? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I would say, in a manner of speaking, what, um... Mr. Gillette does is associated with something that does grow in the great big outdoors, yes. That's what he said, yes. Um, <laughs> you, you, your hands look to me as if they're very sensitive and you probably have green fingers. And, uh, are you concerned with the well-being of this thing that grows, in a sense, in the outdoors? Well, we like to see him happy. You like to see him happy. <laughs> This thing that you deal with in the great outdoors is something come from it that we could consume by way of fruit or corn or whatever it may be, something we could eat. Oh, yes, we could consume it. Are you then something so delightful but simple as a fruit farmer? No. That's no. two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Gillette, are, are oh, they... Know. Excuse me. You know, there's one thing I'm afraid of, the three things I'm afraid of, and all three of them are women, brunettes, blondes, and redheads. <laughs> I was on another tack entirely, but now I know what he does. He's a gag writer. <laughs> uh, but uh, may I ask this question, Mr. Gillette? Uh, the, the things uh, that you try to keep happy in your work, are they ever alive? Are they what? Ever alive. Very alive. Are they in the animal kingdom? Yes. Do they have four legs? Yes. Are, are they in the cow, calf, bull, or steer family, whatever family that is? Yes. Do you have anything to do with steers? The what? Steers. Well, yes. All kinds of cattle. Are you a cattle man? No. <laughs> hey, Bennett. <laughs> well, now, actually, this is a little bit difficult because I think, sir, with your permission, uh, I think probably uh, Miss Kilgallen used cattle man there in a very broad sense Maybe to, to determine whether you uh, you know, uh, deal uh, uh, with cattle. Do you have something to do uh, with cattle? Cattle, uh, cattle men are men who own ranches. Oh, I think, Mr. Gillette's a cowboy. That's what I think. <laughs> 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 Mr. 
The remarkable thing about it is that Mr. Gillette is a cowboy, and he rides fence, and he works roundups, and he's been doing it most of his wonderful life, and he is 83 years old, and he's still at it. But the nice thing is... I can hear him now singing Home on the Range. <laughs> Do you sing? No. No. But he does do something else. He, the years have been very kind to him, and he has been kind to the years and in the contribution he has made since he's been with us. But he has, with the years, found an avocation. He has a radio program, which he tapes every day and is played on, on uh, a station in Flagstaff. Isn't yes, that, sir? sir? And he's known out in his own country, and very properly so, as a cowboy philosopher. The only thing he's afraid of is, is uh, three things. Blondes, <laughs> redheads, and brunettes. But otherwise, he's not. I met my nemesis in another, in another avenue. But I think it was led up to by the brunette. That's right. I think you gave Dorothy a bum steer. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, a quick mind is an asset, but a quick tongue in this sense de developed into a liability. <laughs> May we say thank you for being our guest, and may we hope that you have a great many more wonderful and happy years on the range. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as you know, my friends on the panel are all blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Mm. Yes, yes, sir. Good. Sir. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, does music have anything to do with your work? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever appeared in a big role in a motion picture? Uh, no. I don't know. I don't know. What? No. Two down, eight to go, Miss Francis. Was that no? That was no. All the way? Yes. Yeah. Are you, um, would you be considered a television personality? Uh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes? Yes. Okay. Don't Mr. fight. Mr. Andrews? Well, at least I know you're not Ingemar this week. Have you something to do with comedy? Uh, yes. Hmm? Ms. Kilgallen? Uh, have you anything to do with sports? Uh, mm, no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Yes. Sir. Yes. Uh, do you play the same character in most of your television appearances? Uh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> That's four down and six to go, Ms. Francis. Would you be considered also a nightclub personality? Well, uh, yes, you might. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Andrews? You sound like another cowboy from Arizona. <laughs> Have you ever appeared um, in Great Britain? No. Oh. That's five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, would you say you were primarily a nightclub comedian rather than a television comedian? Uh, I would, yes. Uh, Yes. Mr. Sir? Are you appearing in a nightclub in the metropolitan area at the present time? No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Are you appearing... Is there more than one? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid we have to say yes to that, Miss Francis. There is more than one? Yes, there is. Well, uh, is that my question? I think that's your question, Mr. Okay. Andrews. Well, I better establish if there's more than one. Are you of different sexes? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilgallen? And you're comedians, but you don't have anything to do with music. Uh, right. 
That's right? That's right. Well, go ahead, Dennis. No, that's not a question. That was elicited oh. earlier. That's a point of information. Uh, are you married? No. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, have you uh, shot up very rapidly from a, in recent years and after having made a start in the Chicago area? Hmm. Well, we started in Chicago. Yes. Never oh, shot anywhere. <laughs> That's, uh, Mike and Elaine. Mike and Elaine, is it? That's not? right. <laughs> that wonderful Mike and Elaine, they have become so famous, and properly so, in, a, in these short months when they've just gone straight up into the top of the the clouds. They're known as Mike and Elaine. It's Mike Nichols, of course, and Elaine May, needless to say. But the thing that tickles the daylights out of the three of us is that you didn't know until about, what, 60 seconds ago that there were two and not just one. It sounded like one person until somebody said one word. I don't know which one was it. It was Elaine the low voice. It was no. Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was said man? no and it sounded so different. Which one of you was so the old different. man? Me. Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> you mean we sound alike? That's terrifying. Yes. In a way. <laughs> This is how these wonderful things that they do are born. I bet that one of these days, not too long distant now, I will have the golden opportunity to hear them again, and I'll hear Elaine say, I mean, we sound alike. Then I know, well, I know where that one started. Well, I must say, it's wonderful of you both to come and join us. Miss Elaine is not feeling very well tonight, and I think she's a good soldier to come in and to have They're played so big a part. They're going to be doing a play, uh, uh, a review, or a, you're going to appear in the, oh. in the theater soon, aren't Thank you? you? Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Yes. So you better get home and get some rest, because it's hard work. Right. <laughs> they are going to have their own review in the fall. Yes, October 8th. So we'll we'll yes. all look forward to The it. last mystery guest we had didn't get home in time. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now may we have our final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Right there. Mitch? Shapiro, right? Uh, Mitch, say hello to the panel and come on over and sit down with me. Panel, I'm going to speed things up a bit because we're running short of time. I will tell you that Mr. Shapiro is from Dunkirk, New York, and uh, we will let the audience in the theater and the folks at home know very quickly what his line is, and then you have to do it in something like two minutes. All right. Mr. Shapiro is salaried. He deals in a product, and we'll begin with Bennett Cerf. Mr. Shapiro, is this product in which you deal a useful one? Yes. Is it used by both sexes? Yes. Is it used in the home? Yes. Is it consumed? Yes. Is it consumed by placing it inside the mouth? Yes. Is it a solid? Yes. Does it grow in its no. natural state? No. no. That's one down to nine to go, Miss Francis. It's a manufactured product? Yes. Would one have it at uh, meal time as opposed to uh, in between meals? No. No, in that con connotation, you might have it at mealtime, more likely between meals. Mr. Andrews. The audience seemed to laugh uh, about what it was. Is it perhaps something in the medical field? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you ever, ha ever see it at a cocktail party? <laughs> no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Eat. Yes. Is it in the candy line? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. It's sweet, but it's not in the candy line. Is it, uh... Is it basically sugar or molasses? Yes. yes. Is it, uh, and it's not candy, is it uh, ever put in anything else? No. No, I'm sorry, we've run out of time. It's my fault, because this would be great fun. I think you're very close to it. Mr. Shapiro puts sticks in popsicles, and popsicles are the uh, product in which he deals. He's with the Dunkirk Ice Cream Company and makes 55,000 popsicles a day. Bless you, Because he's got a machine Stephen Andrews, again, it's very nice to have had you with us. Thank you. And uh, 
I know you had a lot of fun last Monday night. Hope you had a lot of fun tonight. And good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, John. Good night, Eamon. Happy trip. Thank you. Good night, night Dorothy. Good luck with the new Irish television. Thank good night, Bennett. I think we should have that popsicle fellow on on Father's Day, don't you, John? <laughs> good night. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen. And thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Woodson and Bill Conner.